Have you ever wondered why some people start off with the gym and seem to make progress effortlessly when others put in training session after training session to see very few results? Listen, I know how frustrating it can feel to see someone make twice the progress as you did in half the time. You ask, how is he making so much progress so fast? Why am I not getting the same results? What does he have that I'm missing? This is something we call genetics. Many like to use it as an excuse for why they're not building muscle or losing fat. Although genetics do play a big role in muscle mass you put on, most people have better genetics than they think they do. Just because someone is making faster progress doesn't mean you have bad genetics. That is something you have to realize. Now, genetics can still be very frustrating, largely since you have zero control over them. So the question I want to answer is, how good are your genetics really? Or where do you find yourself on the genetic scale? To answer that question, we first need to understand what bodybuilding genetics really are. I define bodybuilding genetics as the amount of muscle you can put on and how that muscle looks once you have it. So there's three broad categories which make up bodybuilding genetics. One, your natural muscle building ceiling. Two, your rate of growth and three, your specific muscle and bone genetics. Your natural muscle building ceiling represents the maximum amount of muscle you can put on if you were given unlimited time to put that muscle on and with perfect conditions. Your rate of growth is how fast you can put on a certain amount of muscle and finally specific muscle and bone genetics. This is for example your specific muscle insertions, bone structure and many more like this. The first two categories represents how much muscle you can put on and the third category represents how that muscle will look once you have it. First, let's determine what your natural muscle building ceiling is. This obviously is a very tricky one. How are we supposed to determine what someone's maximum muscle building potential is? Well, the answer is that you can't. You cannot determine how much muscle someone will be able to put on if they were given unlimited time. However, you can always guess this, and this is where an FFMI calculator comes in. You can find different ones online, but I recommend one from Menno Henselmans. What you want to do is put all the measurements like they ask you to do, and they'll give you a rough estimate of what you're capable of. Now of course this won't be fully correct, there's many things that can go wrong. You might put in the wrong measurements, the calculator might lack information, or there might be a margin of error. But in general, it can give you a rough estimate of your muscle building potential. Besides this, there isn't really any way for you to measure this. Now, there are some genetic variables that will determine your potential. For example, we have something called myostatin, which is a protein that inhibits muscle growth. This is a protein in the body which has the job to limit muscle growth and make sure our muscles don't grow too big. In nature, having too large muscles would put you at a disadvantage, which is why it is there in the first place. Some people have more or less myostatin, which can either block their muscle growth potential or allow them to grow very far. You have examples of people or animals born with myostatin deficiencies, which means their body doesn't really have anything to block muscle growth. You can see this in cows that are completely massive or some dogs and cats as well. A second thing are muscle fiber types. People either have fast twitch muscle fibers or slow twitch muscle fibers. These will determine what you will be better at training wise. Fast twitch muscle fibers generally make you better at strength and power training, whilst making you better at putting on muscle mass. Think about bodybuilding, powerlifting and other sports in that same category. On the other hand, slow twitch muscle fibers make you better at long distance and endurance sports. Think marathons or general cardio based sports. Now, think about how your body reacts to sports. Do endurance sports feel more effortless than strength training or does strength training feel much easier? Think about the things that you were naturally better at as a child. If you think about those things, maybe you'll get a glimpse into what you're genetically better at. Fortunately for us, this is one of the rare genetic variables we do have some control over. Through certain training, we can increase the amount of certain muscle fibers and decrease the other. Through bodybuilding style training or powerlifting, I can increase the amount of fast twitch muscle fibers that I have and otherwise as well. Another thing is individual muscle building potential. Some muscle groups in our bodies react much better to training than other muscle groups. This is how you create imbalances in a physique. For example, I realized that my biceps and arms in general tend to have a much harder time growing than my chest, no matter how hard or how much I train them. What you then want to do in the case you have a muscle imbalance like this is to adapt the amount of volume you do for certain muscles. If your chest is a dominant muscle group and your arms are a weaker muscle group, try decreasing the volume and intensity you do for chest and increase the volume and intensity you do for arms. That way your chest grows at a slower pace and your arms at a more rapid pace, which means they'll be able to catch up. 
A last variable that can determine how much muscle you'll be able to put on is your muscle cell size and number. Obviously, the more muscle cells you have, the more growth potential you have, and the bigger each of those cells are, again, the more muscle growth potential you have. Now, of course, this still doesn't really help us determine what our maximum muscle growth potential is. The only real way to do it is with an FFMI calculator. Now, next, we have our rate of growth. What you'll see is very different growth curves with different people. The general muscle building curve stays very similar, of course, but there's many individual differences. For example, if two people have the exact same natural muscle building potential, the first person might put most of his muscles on in the first three years, and that curve will drop very hard in the years after, and the second person might gain muscle much more slowly in the first few years, but keeps a very consistent growth over the years. This is something you can keep in mind, but again, something you can't measure unless you literally try it. Something interesting you'll see with very quick body transformations is that those influencers usually have muscle building genetics biased towards growing very quickly in the first few years, and have much less growth after. When we look at David Laid, regardless of whether he took steroids or not, he made an enormous transformation during those 3-4 to four years, but now 6 years later, he doesn't look much different than he did at 19. You can see the very quick gains at first which then drastically slow down after. This covers how much muscle you can actually build and how fast you can build it. The next variable is how the muscle will look once you gain it. Here we have a couple genetic variables. For example, muscle bellies play a big role in your appearance. The most common example is looking at long biceps versus short ones. You can see that the one on the left looks a lot better and fuller than the one on the right. Another example is lat insertions. Again, the one on the left looks fuller and more impressive than the one on the right. Ab insertions have this too. Although there's a size difference, the left one looks significantly better than the right one, leading to my next point. Not only do insertions play a role, but fat distribution too. Going back to the abs, the one on the left carries less body fat in its midsection than the one on the right. Here's an example of Brett Mossing. He's estimated to be 15% body fat in this picture, while still maintaining a full six pack. The reason behind this is because he tends to carry more fat in his legs and back, leading to his visible six pack, even at a higher body fat percentage. We can also talk about something called anthropometry. This is the science that defines physical measures of a person's size, form, and functional capacities. In the case of bodybuilding, having larger clavicles and a smaller waist will make a significant difference. Having more narrow clavicles will look less impressive regardless of muscle size. Now, all these things are very interesting, of course, but how do I know if I have good genetics or not? Well, the first thing I would do is look at your parents' genetics. Now, they might be overweight right now, but you can maybe look back at some old photos and some old pictures of when they were younger and try to analyze whether you can see good muscle development for their level of training and exercise at the time. If they had good muscle development and had never done bodybuilding in their lives, you might have better genetics than you'd think. Another thing you can check is some of the genetic variables we discussed. For example, when we discussed fast twitch versus slow twitch muscle fibers, you can always think about what you were better at in sports class. Now, obviously, you might have been a fat kid always on the side, waiting for time to pass, but if you were a normal healthy kid, did you tend to be better at endurance sports or strength and speed sports? If you were better at things like sprinting or throwing things very far, you might have more of the fast twitch muscle fibers. Maybe you can just think back about the times, or just those times right now, the current times, about what you're better at naturally. Do you tend to be better at strength and speed, or do you tend to be better at endurance sports? Now, the third way is obviously to measure your potential with an FFMI calculator, or you can also do this with something called the Casey Butt Test. If you want, some guy looked at a bunch of studies and found that measuring your ankle and wrist was a strong predictor of how much muscle a person can build naturally. These are measurements that the FFMI calculator also takes in, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. Now, it is easy for someone to build their bad genetics and quit because of it, without realizing that most people have decent genetics with which they can achieve great results with years of consistent and optimized training. Just because you look a certain way now, it doesn't mean you can't look much better in the future. You may just have hidden above average genetics just because you lack proper training, diet, and enough time. Only a very small percentage either have terrible genetics or excellent genetics, but all that gets shown are the excellent genetics, and it's very easy to start comparing your genetics to that very small percentage of people. Looking at the distribution curve, most people find themselves here, in the average category. Yet, what you're shown are the people who always belong to this category. But regardless of how bad you consider your genetics to be, it's always possible to improve yourself and make your genetics appear better than they actually are. By optimizing the work you put in with diet, training and overall lifestyle over the decades, it's very much possible to move up two categories. 
Now, no matter what, focusing on your bad genetics is never a good way to approach it. In Stoicism, it is said to focus on the parts of life you can control and avoid those you cannot control, which is very true here. Focus on building good habits, eat well and train hard, and avoid obsessing over the quality of your genetics since you have zero control over them. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. There is a link in the description that will take you towards a product that I'm currently building. It isn't built yet, but if you put your email address, you will get 50% off once it launches. You can go and check that out, you don't have to. Peace.